Hello everyone, welcome back to the AWS Cloud Engineer Essential Series. My name is Dheeraj Chaudhary and today we are going to explore one of the AWS most powerful services for global content delivery known as Amazon CloudFront. If you have ever wanted to understand that how the website applications or videos load faster, faster for all the users over the world, CloudFront is the solution. As AWS Content Delivery Network, it leverages hundreds of edge locations to reduce latency, improve performance, and secure applications. In this deep dive, we will cover what CloudFront is, its key features, how it works behind the scenes, popular use cases, a console, a demo, and best practices. By the end, you will be ready to deliver content at scale securely with lightning fast speed. So let's get started with the basics of AWS CloudFront. So Amazon CloudFront is AWS content delivery network designed to deliver content to users worldwide with enterprise grade reliability. It works by distributing your content through a vast network of global edge locations strategically positioned closer to end users. This approach significantly reduces the latency and provides faster loading time, which is going to improve overall, overall user experience. CloudFront isn't limited to just static content like images or JavaScript files. It also supports dynamic content, making it versatile enough for modern web application, APIs, and even media streaming. In short, CloudFront ensures that no matter where you, uh, where your users are, they get the fastest and the most reliable version of your content. So next, next let's explore the key features that make CloudFront such a powerful service. So these are the key features that you can see. The first is global edge network. So CloudFront uses over 600 points of presence worldwide, strategically located to ensure your users get content from the nearest server. This reduces the latency and improves performance across continents. So when I say uh, global uh, edge network worldwide, 600 points. Now, the second key feature is intelligent caching. So CloudFront stores frequently accessed content at the edge, which reduces the load on your origin servers and speeds up the delivery with advanced caching algorithms. Third is the enterprise security. CloudFront integrates with SSL and TLS uh, encrypted delivery, uh, along with AWS Shield for DDoS protection and AWS Web Application Firewall for application layer security. And finally, flexible origins. You can deliver content from S3, EC2, Elastic Load Balancer, or even non-premise servers. This gives you complete flexibility depending on your infrastructure setup. Together, these features makes CloudFront a comprehensive CDN that balances performance, security, and flexibility. Now let's understand how CloudFront actually works to deliver the content quickly. When a user requests a content, say by entering your website, and uh, typing the domain name, the, the request is first routed through the DNS to the nearest CloudFront edge location. This is determined based on the geography and the network condition. If the content is already at the edge location, CloudFront delivers it immediately. This is called cache hit and it results in lightning fast response time. But if the content is not available in the cache, that is a cache miss, CloudFront fetches it from the origin server that you can see over here, uh, whether that can be S3 bucket, EC2 instance, or any other source, which is your origin server. And once retrieved, the content is stored back over here in the CloudFront edge locations. So if a user is going to come back again and look for that missing information for which we already used the origin server, is not going to again going to fetch that information. For some time, it is going to be stored in the cache of CloudFront Edge location. Now, all of this happens in milliseconds, ensuring users get the fastest experience possible while also reducing the load on the origin server that you have. Next, let's look at the use cases where CloudFront can add value. So, uh, CloudFront is incredibly versatile as we spoke, and here's our, uh, some of its most common use cases. The first use case is accelerating static website. So CloudFront optimizes the delivery of images, CSS, and JavaScript files, reducing page load times and improving your user experience across multiple devices. Second, low latency delivery for dynamic apps. 
for interactive applications like gaming, real-time dashboards, or APIs, CloudFront ensures performance with intelligent caching and edge routing. Third, video and media streaming. In this, CloudFront supports adaptive bitrate streaming, enabling smooth playback of videos across different devices and bandwidth conditions. And finally, application security and DDoS protection. With the AWS Shield and WAF integrated, CloudFront helps def uh, defend your application from malicious traffic while still ensuring fast delivery. So when you're hosting a static website or you're hosting a real-time app or a large-scale video streaming, CloudFront has you covered. Next, let's walk through how you can set up a distribution of CloudFront in AWS Management Console. So in this demo, what we're going to do is we are going to have end-to-end -end demo in which first I am going to go ahead and create an S3 bucket. Over there, we are going to load our index.html and error.html file. Once we upload our files over there, then we are going to go ahead and enable the static website hosting for that specific bucket. Then we are going to go ahead and create our CloudFront distribution because why we have to create the S3 bucket first because we are going to use that S3 bucket as an origin in our CloudFront distribution. That is the reason we have to first create the S3 bucket. Once that has been created, CloudFront is set up. Then we are going to align that CloudFront with our Route 53 entry that we created in our last video. That is the A record. So as soon as I am going to hit my domain name, AI Deploy Hub, it is going to route us to our static website, which is hosted on S3 bucket. Now, uh, let me go ahead and jump to the AWS console over here. First, I will type S3 and I will just load this. So once S3 is we are inside, we are going to click on create bucket. In this bucket, we are going to give the bucket name as AI deploy hub dot me. Now uh, we are going to keep this ownership as it is. We are going to clip, uh, keep the block public access as it is. We are just going to enable the bucket versioning and we are going to keep the tag, everything as it is. We are not going to enable anything. So using S3, uh, so we are going to disable this. We don't need a bucket key at the current moment. And we are going to keep the encryption as it is. And in advanced settings also, we are not going to make any changes. And I will go ahead and click on create bucket. Once the create bucket is been created. Yeah. So if I click on view detail and it, it is saying me that my bucket is been created successfully. And now I am inside my bucket. Once I am inside my bucket, what I will have to do is I have to upload my file. So let me show you the files that I have first. So this is the uh, index.html file. So if we are going to use, this is going to load this index.html. And along with index.html, I have one more file, which is error.html. In case of any error, it is going to throw an uh, error and it will go to error.html. Okay. Now let me just go ahead to our S3 bucket and I'll click on upload. Once we click on upload, then I will click on add files. So in add files, I will go to CloudFront code and I'm going to open this. So you can see two files we have added as part of our S3 bucket and I'm going to click on upload. Once I click on upload, the files are uploaded successfully. What's the next step? We'll go ahead and close this. And once we are back in the bucket, we will click on properties. Once we click on properties, scroll down uh, till the time you come to static website hosting. Once you come to static website hosting, click on edit. So after coming on static website hosting, click enable, then keep this option as it is. Index.html, it is going to be index.html, HTML and error.html. So these are the two files that we have added and I'm going to go ahead and click on save changes. So this is how 
our static website hosting is completed successfully from the S3 bucket side. Now I am going to go to the console again and I'm going to search for CloudFront. So I will go ahead and open CloudFront and in CloudFront, we are going to create a distribution. I say create distribution. Now, once we click on create distribution, sorry, once we click on create distribution, we are going to give the name for our distribution that is going to be AI deploy hub dash distribution. Okay. No need of any description, but if you want, we can give this single page website. You will, uh, yeah. So I have given the same distribution type as single page website over there. We have to keep this as it is. No need to add custom domain over here because we are going to give the origin as S3 bucket. Then I am going to click on next. It comes to Amazon S3 bucket. Over here, I am going to browse and I am going to select our bucket. I chose our bucket. We don't have to give any uh, path or something. So as we have already added, the S3 origin over here, we have to keep the setting as it is. We don't have to change anything over here. Let's click on next. Uh, we don't have to enable the WAF. So we will click do not enable next. And that's it. And we will go ahead and create our distribution. So once our distribution is created successfully, then we will have to go ahead uh, and inside general, under setting, we will go ahead and say edit. Once we say edit, you will have to actually go ahead and add index.html over here. Once you do that, you don't have to make any other changes. Just go ahead and click on save changes. Once that changes is done, the another change that you will have to do is go to origins under origin, click on this and click on edit. Once you click on edit origin, you will see that as we have created uh, our uh, distribution at that time, we didn't got any uh, policy that we have to add to our S3 bucket. But after the creation only when you go in edit mode, then and only then you will get this policy. You will have to copy this policy from here and you will have to then go ahead in buckets, search for your buckets inside your bucket, go to permissions under permissions in bucket uh, policy go ahead and paste this. So once you paste, so one thing that you saw over here is, I think the ARN is not coming properly. So I can just go ahead and add the ARN. Sometimes the policy it creates, it does not create the ARN properly, but right now the ARN has been created successfully. I will just go ahead and click on save changes. So now the policy is also in place and the distribution changes are also been made. So <clears throat> if I go back to a cloud distribution, uh, this is edit origin. So right now we have not changed anything over here. So I will just cancel this because no changes are required over there. That's the only two change you have to do after creation. And I will go back to distribution. Meanwhile, I will just go to general. And if you can see it has been deployed successfully. It will take some time to deploy, but once it is deployed, so this is our AI, uh, this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and now copy this domain name and open your incognito window. And over here, I will say HTTPS colon oh, double slash control V and you can see our website is getting uh, displayed properly by using CloudFront. So now you can see our CloudFront is able to serve the static website, which we have added on our S3 bucket. So this completes our exercise where we created S3 bucket, we created a CloudFront and after creating CloudFront distribution, now the CloudFront distribution is routing the traffic appropriately to the S3 bucket. Now let's move 
ahead and talk about the best practices last but not the least so as part of the best practices uh to get most out of cloud front we should follow it the first uh best practice is always enable https using ssl and tls certificates from aws certification uh, certificate manager so right now i have not used aws certification manager but when you are going to do it in real time in companies you will have to use a certification manager because when you use ssl and tls you need that and they are free easy to set up and provide secure content delivery second use caching policy so define intelligent cache behaviors and appropriate time to live values to maximize cache hit ratios this reduces the origin load and speeds up your performance for your user third integrate with route 53 by mapping cloud front distribution to custom domains through route 53 uh, you can uh, route the traffic Uh, directly with your website name so right now i have uh, routed the traffic to the website by using the cloud front domain name right but you can do that uh, by adding this cloud front to the a record or the c name record and you can route the traffic to this cloud front distribution by using route 53 and finally monitor traffic with cloudwatch uh, metrics this helps you track performance detect anomalies and continuously optimize your distribution for different regions by applying these practices you will ensure cloud front delivers not just speed but also security reliability and cost efficiency so now let's close the final slide and that brings us to the end of this deep dive into amazon cloud front where we explored edge locations caching and global delivery if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thank you for joining me today and i will see you in the next session